Hey, what's up? Today we're going to be learning about inner classes together. It's going to be a great time. A lot of people who took my course are understanding Java a lot better. So if you want to understand Java like them, you can check out my course down below. So let's start learning about inner classes together by going to File New Java Project. We'll call it like Inner Inner Demons. I like that. Have some fun play on words. Inside here, we'll make a new class together. Call it like Inner Inner Stellar. That's a funny joke. Alex, you're so funny. Basically, an inner class or a nested class is a class inside of a class. And that looks like this. Say we have a class like outside. Well, inside of there, we can have variables and methods, but we can also have another class. So let's do that like this, call it inside. And we just created a nested class, which means it's inside of another one. Say that the outside class maybe has an integer a that's equal to zero. And then this class inside has a variable b that's equal to five. You can get the inner class by doing this. Inside your main method, let's try to get that variable b. To do that, make the outside class, call it like o. And since this is in the same file, it already knows an outside class exists. Now we have to make the inside class. And to access it, we have to do outside dot inside, we'll name it i is equal to this outside object o dot new inside. I know this looks confusing, but that's that's how you gotta do it. Now to see that this works, we can print out o dot a, a little space, and then we can print i dot b. Save and run. And we'll see both of those variables from these classes. I personally don't really use inner classes very much, but there are instances where it's more readable and maintainable for code for a class to be inside of a class. But in general, you probably won't really need them. However, it's good practice. Look how we made this here. We make an object just like any other object with this format. You can access the elements inside of a class, such as variables, methods, and now other classes, by doing a dot. So that's why outside.inside works is because that dot brings up this class. And to be honest, this part still confuses me a little and it has to be like this because the outside object has to be made and then the inside object has to be made from that one. It's tricky, but again, you probably won't need to use this. If this class was private, if this was a private inner class, it wouldn't work because the outside class wouldn't be able to see it. So make sure it's not private. Also, if this inner class was static, you could get around doing this weird setup. You could just do outside.inside i equals new outside.inside. Kind of looking a little more like a normal object. And let's try to do i.a and i.b to see what happens. And we'll see an error come up because inside this inside object or class doesn't know a, it only knows b which is why we can't do i.a. This is a little confusing because with scope, usually everything in the outside curly braces is what the variables know. So if there were methods in here, it would know a. But however, since this is an entire inner class, it doesn't know things outside the scope. I hope that makes sense. This class will only know what's inside of its curly braces, which is why we can print i.b, save and run, and it works fine. Each class, of course, can have its own variables and methods, just like all my other object-oriented programming videos. So that's really it. I don't want to complicate this too much, but this is really what you need to know. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video.